Hello dear students, I am Dr. Vibha Sherpa, Associate Professor in Government Law College, Ajmer. So today, as you can see on the slide, we would be discussing some of the remaining forms of punishment in this part 2 video of mine on penology. So let's start from here. So yes, as you can see, this is the same slide that I used in my previous video, but of course with different colors. So we have three colors here, purple, dark blue and the light blue one, apart from these two background colors. Now the reason for bringing them in different colors is basically because those of you who have seen my previous video are already aware about these forms of punishment, that is flogging, mutilation, branding, stoning, pillory, and banishment. So we already know as to when were they in existence, what they actually mean, and also if some of them are still in existence or not. In today's video, we would be saying something more about fines, forfeiture of property, security bond, and solitary confinement, whether they are in existence in India if they are, then where we, do we find them uh, in, in the law book, of course. And these ones like imprisonment and capital punishment, which are in light blue color, I would be taking up in my third video. Yes, I couldn't help it because when I started making these uh, videos uh, and the slides, what I realized that I will not be made doing justice to these particular two aspects of forms of punishment if I would just try to cover them up here itself because otherwise uh, the video would have been longer. So uh, while discussing with imprisonment, I would also be taking up the issue of imprisonment for life and we would be seeing something in detail about the capital punishment. Okay. So yeah, let's move on and start with the fines for feature of property, security bond and solitary confinement as we find them in the forms of punishment okay so starting with fines now financial penalty may be either in the form of fine or compensation or costs about the fine we will know in some detail today as far as the compensation or costs are concerned we already are aware that these financial penalty may include payment of compensation to the victim of the crime and payment of costs of the prosecution. Now, coming to fines as such, the imposition of fine was a common mode of punishment for offenses which were not of a serious nature and especially those involving breach of traffic rules or revenue laws. Now, this mode of punishment is being extensively used in almost all the sentencing systems of the world even today. So, fines by way of penalty may be used in case of property crimes or minor offenses such as embezzlement, fraud, theft, gambling, loitering, disorderly conduct, etc., etc. Okay, since we have passed our second year in law, we already are aware that uh, under Indian Penal Code 1860, there are certain provisions, sections 63 to 70, which deal with the imposition of fines as such. So, to know about it in more detail, it is worthwhile to go through each section one by one. But here, for our purposes, it would be sufficient for us to know that the Indian Penal Code provides for imposition of fine as the only disposition method or as an alternative to imprisonment or as a punishment in addition to imprisonment. And who would actually decide about the actual amount of fine? So the actual amount of fine is to be imposed is actually left to the discretion of the sentencing court. What considerations the court is to keep in mind, we will see when we will come on this particular part of the slide. 
So then the question arises regarding the matter of recovery of fines. So in India, in the matter of recovery of fines, the provisions of section 421 of Criminal Procedure Code of 1973 would apply. Now the code provides that when a court imposes a sentence of fine or a sentence of which fine forms a part, it may direct that whole or part of the fine may be paid as a compensation to the victim for the loss or injury caused to him or her on account of the crime. Okay. Now coming to the determination of the amount as such. Now normally court should not sentence an offender only to pay a fine when any other disposition is authorized by law unless having regard to the nature and circumstances of the crime and prior history and antecedents of the offender the sentence of fine alone is deemed sufficient for the protection of public interest clear yeah? now in this case adamji umar dalal versus state in the year 1952 supreme court actually observed that in imposing fine it is necessary to have as much regard to the pecuniary circumstances of the accused person as to the character and magnitude of the offense okay so now we will move on to the next form of punishment so now these forms of punishment are forfeiture of property and security bond now we already know that section 53 of the indian penal code of 1860 actually provides the various forms of punishment which are recognized in india correct so section 53 also provides forfeiture of property as a form of punishment now actually there are two offenses specified under sections 126 and 169 of the Indian Penal Code which provide for confiscation of property besides the punishment of imprisonment with or without fine. Oh, starting with section 126, the heading is committing depredation on territories of power at peace with the government of India. Now in this section, actually the person who commits depredation on territories of power at peace with the government of India shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to seven years and also is liable to fine and the property so used or intended to be used in committing such depredation or acquired by such depredation shall be liable to forfeiture. Okay. And section 169 provides for public servant who unlawfully buy or bid for a property then either in their own name or jointly when they actually are legally bound not to purchase or bid for certain properties then such public servants shall be punished with imprisonment which may extend to two years or with fine or with both and the property if purchased shall be confiscated okay so this is all about the form of punishment of forfeiture of property then coming to the security bonds a security bond for good behavior though strictly speaking is not a form of punishment but of course it actually serves a useful purpose as a form of restraint on the offender now this may entail compulsory treatment or supervision of the offender the court may defer sentence 
on some offender conditionally subject to his normal behavior. Now please note that this conditional disposal of offender is actually increasingly being recognized as an effective mode of corrective justice in modern penology. And why is that? Basically because the purpose of this nominal measure of punishment is to offer an opportunity to the offender to become a law-abiding citizen and chances of his reformation are actually better than those who are imprisoned or subjected to institutional sentence. It is also being observed that the family members of the offender also are not adversely affected by this mode of punishment as they are not deprived of their breadwinner. Okay? So I hope that these two kinds of or the forms of punishments are well understood by all of you. Now moving on to the next form of punishment and that is imprisonment. So imprisonment presents a most simple penal and common form of sentencing for incapacitating the criminals. Now it actually proved to be an efficient method of temporary elimination of criminals apart from being a general deterrent and an individual deterrent. However, during the course of time, it was realized that despite it being a corrective measure, there were certain problems relating to the prisonization of the offenders as such. There are many, I have listed just few of them, and they are that generally the prisoner himself or herself is confronted with the most crucial problem of adjustment to the new norms and environment of prison life. So it was found that generally he or she loses the personal identity in the process of adjustment and is converted into a mere impersonal entity. Then it was also found that imprisonment as a mode of punishment had the damaging effect on the family relationship of the offender as well. We are aware once in prison, the offender actually loses contact with the members of his family and suppose he or she is a sole breadwinner, then the results are worse. The family suffers misery, starvation, financial crisis and so on and so forth. So depriving the offender of his family life for a long period actually was found to be creating new problems for prison discipline also in the form of bribery, corruption, revolt, etc. And in the cases of the prisonization of women offenders, it actually presented manifold problems before the prison administration, particularly when the women prisoners who are pregnant or who have babies who need special care and attention uh, with relation to the food, medical treatment, health and nourishment of the child, etc., 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 actually started casting additional financial burden on the prison authorities. So, all these factors were, of course, there and uh, it was realized that certain things need to be brought in place of this prisonization of the offenders. So, we actually find that the conditions of imprisonment in civilized countries have actually undergone radical changes in the recent decades. The minimum security institutions such as open air prisons, prison hostels, etc. are being increasingly used as modified forms of incarceration of offenders. In India, generally, parole and furlough are being extensively used as a part of penal substitutes for mitigating the rigors of prison inmates. The All India Jail Reforms Committee had also observed that 
the prisoners should be released on furlough after undergoing a specified period of imprisonment so that they maintain contact with their relatives and friends and thereby they may not feel uprooted from society and thus saved from the evil effects of prisonization. However, the fact remains that imprisonment is still one of the most accepted forms of punishment throughout the world. Uh, and with the modern correctional techniques introduced in prison institutions, it actually serves as an efficient measure of reforming criminals and at the same time protecting the society from antisocial elements. So we can say that imprisonment actually serves dual purpose that is of prevention and reformation. Okay? That is preventive and reformative justice at one and the same time. So now we will know about solitary confinement as a form of punishment. We will quickly go through its meaning, in which form it was in existence in earlier times, in which form it now exists in Indian penal policy, and how the courts view it now okay so solitary confinement actually is the confining of the convicts in solitary prison cells without work now in ancient penology of india it was considered to be an effective expiatory measure it was believed that complete isolation of man provides him better opportunity for penance and remonstrance and the feeling of guilt and self-hatred tends to bring about his reformation speedily. It was a common mode of punishment for hardened criminals in medieval times. Now actually solitary confinement was intended for elimination of criminals from society and at the same time incapacitating them from repeating crime. The deterrence involved in this mode of punishment was deemed necessary for prevention of crime. However, it was found that the monotony involved in this kind of punishment actually had the most devastating effect on criminals. Now, we all know that man by nature is a social being and therefore he or she cannot live in complete isolation from his or her fellow men. Therefore, segregation of convicts into isolated prison cells under the system of solitary confinement actually resulted in disastrous consequences and the prisoners undergoing the sentence either died untimely or became insane. And if at all they came out of the prisons alive, they were found to be more furious and dangerous to society. Okay. Now with this background, we move on to the Indian Penal Code provisions section 73 and 74 where under it actually is placed. Now section 73 provides that the court may order that the offender shall be kept in solitary confinement for any portion or portions of the imprisonment to which he is sentenced not exceeding three months in the whole according to the scale provided here under. Now here I have brought those scales. Now for a period not exceeding one month if the term of imprisonment does not exceed six months. Then, for a period not exceeding two months, if the term of imprisonment does not exceed one year. And then, for a period not exceeding three months, if the term of imprisonment exceeds one year. Clear? Section 74 of Indian Penal Code actually limits the solitary confinement. It says when the substantive 
sentence exceeds three months, then to seven days in any one month. That is to say that solitary confinement must be imposed at intervals. Okay. So the courts generally are of the view that the imposition of the sentence of solitary confinement, although is legal, but it should be very rarely exercised by a criminal court. It is generally being observed by the courts that it should be administered, if ever, in most exceptional cases of unparalleled atrocity or brutality. The Supreme Court has also reiterated this view in Sunil Batra versus State in 1980 and also in Kishore Singh versus State of Rajasthan in 1981. Now, in this case, the Supreme Court actually dealt with the parameters of solitary confinement. And in Sunil, Sunil Batra's case, the court held that the cases involving solitary confinement under sections 29 and 30 of the Prisons Act, though legal, must be inflicted only in accordance with fair procedure as it involves harsh isolation of the prisoners from the society of fellow prisoners which may cause him mental derangement. Okay? Now, moving on to the last slide of today's video. And that is that Section 53 of the Indian Penal Code of 1860 actually provides five types of punishments. Death, life imprisonment, imprisonment, rigorous or simple, forfeiture of property and fine. So, we already have seen about fine, forfeiture of property and somewhat imprisonment we already have started and uh, we have gone through the form of punishment of solitary confinement we are left with life imprisonment and capital punishment that is a death sentence so i'll take these up in the next video okay so i really hope that all of you are taking very good care of yourselves and your family members as well as your friends your relatives so uh, keep on studying. All the very best for your exams and God bless you all. Thank you so very much for listening to me. Bye.